today, we repeatedly hear that we need to fail fast, fail cheap and move on. But how do you really do that? Prototyping helps because it forces us to bring our ideas to life. But most prototypes are designed, built and evaluated inside company walls. Or at best with a focus group of hand-picked customers. At IDEO, working with large companies and startups, we've seen this approach backfire. Primarily because the feedback from focus groups is rarely representative of the real world. Instead, I think you should release your idea into the wild before it's ready. First, skip the focus group. Place your product or service in the real environment. When launching Vwater, a soft drink that has now been acquired by Pepsi, the co-founder took a prototype of the product and put it on the shelf of his local supermarket. He'd wait until shoppers either picked up his product or ignored it, and then ask them why. He got immediate feedback from real people in the context that they would be evaluating his product. Secondly, you can also test your idea's appeal online before it even exists. Vwater's approach doesn't scale easily, but new technologies enable us to test whether our ideas would be appealing to specific groups or even the mass market. That's how Zynga tests new ideas for its social games. They create a five-word pitch for a new game and post it on a website that's popular within their target market. When someone clicks on the pitch, they're directed to a survey. The company assesses interest, minimising the chance of market rejection, all before Zynga has written a line of code. Finally, you can launch a faked version of your service. Intuit, the technology company, went beyond just testing marketing appeal. It wanted to test if a new SMS service to Indian farmers would actually be adopted. Instead of taking months to build a fully working platform, the team built a convincing mock-up of the service and they fulfilled the complex parts of the system themselves. All this in seven weeks. By launching the fake site and finding that farmers embraced the product, it confirmed that the service fulfilled a real need and, when it began building, it was able to incorporate the feedback from the trials. Launching new products and services can be risky. And public prototyping can feel risky too. You might worry your idea will be copied or that it could be embarrassing to launch with something less than perfect. But think of it this way. Testing your prototype in the real world is faster, lower cost and is far less risky than placing a big bet on something that people may not want. Real world prototypes can help you prioritise which projects you should pursue and how you should pursue them. What might you launch into the wild to learn from?